Meguiar's presents Car Crazy, the show that focuses on the people behind the cars. Most kids like to play with cars, but for some, it becomes an obsession. This type of person, and there are millions of us, have an unusual preoccupation with cars. And sometimes it is not at all rational. Indeed, we are talking about people of all ages and all walks of life who are certifiably car crazy. Hi, I'm Barry McGuire, and I've spent my entire life working and associated with people who are crazy about their cars. This show is intended to gain insight into these people and understand why they are so car crazy. It's been called a contagious disease, and we hope this show will help you catch the bug if you haven't already. In this episode of Car Crazy, we'll sit down with Wally Parks, the man whose vision for organizing and structuring drag racing developed into the world's largest motorsport sanctioning body, the National Hot Rod Association. Next, we'll talk with Robert E. Peterson, who created Hot Rod Magazine and Motor Trend Magazine more than 50 years ago, which eventually led to the Peterson Publishing Empire. Wally and Pete have been buddies all their lives and impacted the car hobby more than any other two people I know. Their stories are what history is made of. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Car Crazy. Recently we caught up with a man whose enthusiasm for racing has spanned over 60 years. Wally Parks is known to his friends and colleagues as the father of drag racing. In 1937, as a member of the Roadrunners Car Club, he helped form the Southern California Timing Association, the oldest acting organization for hot rod car clubs in the world. In 1947, he helped co-publishers Bob Peterson and Bob Lindsay establish Hot Rod Magazine and was its editor for over 14 years. In 1951, he created the National Hot Rod Association to foster the growth and development of drag racing. For nearly 50 years, the NHRA has been tearing up drag strips across America and is the world's largest motorsports governing body. Wally was a central figure in the birth of the American motorsports industry. We had the privilege to sit down with Wally at the NHRA's Motorsports Museum in Pomona, California. Trim Hot Rod, actually the first time I ever heard that was when I was out in the South Pacific and one of our new recruits into the company came in from, or the, the, uh, the group came in from San Luis Obispo and talked about the hot rods that they had fun with. I'd never heard that expression before, but my own personal experience started long before that. Actually, I ran my first car at uh, what is now Edwards Air Force Base in 1933, turned 82 and 1900 miles an hour. So I was involved with uh, a lot of activities prior to going into the service, and then after that we had a chance to reestablish the whole thing, and it took off from there. The whole racing uh, that, uh, that has taken place on the Salt Flats, you really prompted that to happen, didn't you? Well, I helped. There, you know, I get credit for an awful lot of things that there were hundreds of us that really achieved and accomplished, but I was the one that led the little crusade up to Salt Lake City and got the first permission for us to run on the Salt Flats, and we ran our first event there in 1949. And at that time, of course, Hot Rod Magazine was new and fresh, and I was the first editor of it, and we were the co-sponsors right. of that event. But didn't you set one of the first <laughs> records? Well, <laughs> I, I, actually, I have a record that probably will never be broken because I had the, the privilege of being the first to spin out on the course at the first event that we had at Bonneville. But it did give me the satisfaction of knowing if you're going to spin a car, that's the safest place in the world to do it. Right. Along the way, you meet this young kid, 19-year-old kid named Bob Peterson. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to hear that from, I've heard Bob talk about it so affectionately. He loves you well, and reveres you so much. Uh, I'd like to hear from your side of the, how that relationship all started. Oh, it, it, it started because at that time I had left my job with General Motors, which I'd gone back to after the end of World War II, and uh, was the general manager of the Southern California Timing Association. And uh, I got a phone call from this kid that I didn't know uh, wanted to come and get together with me and so we set up a meeting and he came out to my house and introduced himself. He was 19, just about 20 years old at that time. 
unemployed and was a part of a group called Hollywood Publicity Associates who were looking for clients. And I told him, but I did have an idea that I'd put together while I was still at General Motors on putting on a public car show and uh, that we could show the people the types of cars that were being worked on in, in the garages and, and maybe help overcome this image. And uh, he, he thought that was interesting and so we arranged for a meeting with uh, Lee Ryan, who was a senior member of Hollywood Publicity Associates. Lee liked it, and as a result of that, why the SCTA and Hollywood Publicity Associates put together the world's first hot rod first show. First hot rod show yeah. there at the, the Armory. Yeah, at the Armory, 19, January 1948. Folks, this is where the hot rod uh, hobby began. I mean, this is, this is the very roots of it here. There was no publication covering this type of activity, so you got Bob Lindsay and they did it, and uh, named it Hot Rod Magazine, and the whole world told us that it was impossible, wouldn't work. Yeah. It somehow yeah. did, though. Yeah. There's a great picture right behind us here that a lot of us have seen and at various times, but uh, you're telling me an, an interesting story about where your camera shots were taken well, from there. <laughs> yeah, this, this old picture is, is, came from early coverage of events right here at Pomona at the Fairplex in the early 1950s, and uh, it was out of the Hot Rod Files from their coverage. But uh, down at the far end where the pump house is and uh, the tree is is where I used to stand and take pictures of cars coming at us for publication in, in, in the magazine. And so I look at this and it brings back a lot of, a lot of long ago memories. And to share those memories now, Wally spends his time making sure that hot rod history can be safely enjoyed by all on this very same property. Wally gives us a tour of the NHRA Museum in Pomona when we come back. Welcome back to Car Crazy. Wally's career sparkles with accomplishments. One of his greatest achievements was his ability to give drag racing its name. When he created the National Hot Rod Association in the early 50s, his goal was to give the hobby respectability at a time when hot rodders were considered hoodlums and thugs. Wally Parks is an amazing 87 years young and continues to keep busy attending NHRA events nationwide and tending to the cultivation and expansion of the NHRA Motorsports Museum in Pomona, California. Oh, well, right here at the entrance, tell us about the statue, Ali. Well, the statue is, is our symbol. We've had it since the uh, 1960s, and it's a thing that I, I designed and got one of our racers to pose for it right here at Pomona, sent the picture to the model maker. We had this made, and since that time, well, this has been the official award that is given out to all of our winners at all major events, and so they're referring to it not as the Oscar, but some people now call it the Wally. <laughs> it's not me, I don't Very pretend it's me. Very appropriate. Of course, the museum is a walk through memory lane, and it's a privilege to share some of your personal history. Actually, we called it suddenly because the slogan of sales at that time was suddenly it's 1960, and that's why the number is 1960 instead of 1950. So we actually recreated it then. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Imagine that car going 157 miles an hour. It was a great ride. It was a great <laughs> ride. Again. Now, didn't you run this car at Muroc a few years ago? Yeah, we uh, we ran at the Dry Lakes and ran it uh, at Muroc as well, and ran it at Bonneville, just, just for the sheer fun of it. We didn't try to go 180 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> at, at what age were you running it? I was uh, a little younger than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is back in the two-engine stage when the uh, uh, bigger seemed to be better, but didn't always work that way. But they were spectacular. The crowds loved the multiple engines, though. They did that. Brought the people to their feet. This shows the evolution of the, the funny car, starting out in the super stock days and working their way on up the line until you got into the more radical ones, and that, that became today's, uh, today's funny car. That's right, the beginning of the January's right back then. And isn't this the car that won the first Nationals, Wally? Well, this is the car that Calvin Rice was driving. He was our first national champion, Great Bend, Kansas, in 1955. And it actually has the original engine, Ford Flathead V8. This one was the drag master that won right here at Pomona in 1962. Right next to it is the one that year, won the year before in Detroit with Leonard Harris driving the thing. Next to that was the second Nationals winner in 1956 in Kansas City. And the last one back there is one that set an international Class C world record in 1958. So there's, there's a lot of variety here. Boy, there really is, and a lot of history.
we can't thank you enough for the tour walk. When Car Crazy returns, we'll get to know one of the most influential men in the history of the automotive industry. Welcome back, everyone. If we are talking about people who are car crazy, we are sitting right now in the asylum for people who are car crazy. It is the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, California, made possible by an endowment from one of the most influential people in the automotive world today, Robert Pete Peterson. Bob Peterson's love for the automobile was evident early on. At the age of 21, he combined his skills as a photographer in the Army Air Corps with his experience as a publicist at MGM to begin his career as a magazine publisher. Working out of his home, along with partner Bob Lindsay, he published the very first issue of Hot Rod Magazine in January of 1948. He had intended to use the magazine to promote the Hot Rod Expo at the Los Angeles Armory, which turned out to be the very first Hot Rod show. Involved in every aspect of the magazine, he even sold copies at a local Southern California Speedway himself. The initial press run of 10,000 copies sold for 25 cents each and quickly sold out. In the following four years, circulation grew to an outstanding 500,000 and kept on growing from there. Today, Hot Rod Magazine is one of the largest automotive publications in the world. In their second year of operations, Peterson created Motor Trend Magazine, which has grown to be the world's leading publication for new car enthusiasts with a circulation of 1.2 million copies. Expanding beyond his success as a publisher, Peterson produced the 1948 International Motorsports Show in New York City, the forerunner of the New York Auto Show. In the following year, with his new Hot Rod Magazine as a sponsor, Peterson and his friend Wally Parks created Bonneville Speed Week, and in so doing, further elevated the status of land speed racing while doing the same for the Southern California Timing Association, the sport's governing body. In 1950, he produced the Autorama car shows at the Shrine and Pan Pacific Auditoriums in Los Angeles, which displayed new car models to a curious public for the very first time, practically inventing today's modern auto show. 20 years later, Peterson and Hollywood car customizer George Barris teamed up to open the Hollywood Motorama Museum, a collection which housed famous cars from film and television. In an overwhelmingly generous gesture to share their success with the world, Bob and Margie established the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. This museum, which opened its doors in 1994, now showcases over 299 rare cars and motorcycles for display to the public and is recognized as one of the premier automotive museums in the world. By the time he had sold his publishing empire in 1996, Robert Peterson's company was producing 77 periodicals for over 45 million subscribers. Today, that same company, presently owned by EMAP, publishes more than 30 consumer and 60 niche publications, including Motor Trend, Carcraft, and Rod and Custom, to name just a few. Peterson's passion for the automobile is reflected in all of his accomplishments. His influence on hot rodding and the automotive industry as a whole has been extraordinary and immeasurable. How did this start that you had this incredible passion that it just, you, were, you have been a driven man to, to uh, well, The passion wasn't cars. that deep originally because my dad told me the way to learn how to work on a car was to start washing parts. So most of my early career I washed parts and I learned every part in a car by washing it and that was his, his uh, theory. Uh, so I didn't care for that that much. I wanted to get on and tune carburetors. But uh, eventually I wound up at MGM uh, working as a messenger and I wound up being a PR man and went in the service, came back, and then they fired us all. So we formed a company called the uh, Hollywood Publicity Associates and we handled amongst all kinds of people a real crazy guy, Madman Muntz. Yeah. Yeah. And Madman Muntz said, give me some great PR deal connecting, connected with racing. And I said, well, why don't we do a hot rod show? We'll take the money and we will uh, build a Madman Muntz drag strip. He said, wonderful idea. So that's what we started with. And then he had some uh, temporary financial problems. <laughs> and so we went on doing the car show yeah. anyway. Yeah. Which was really the first hot rod show. And that it was, was the, the first, first hot rod show in uh, January of 48. And at the same time, Bob Lindsay, a fellow I worked with at MGM, he and I said, why don't we do a magazine? So we came out exactly the same time, January 48, with the first hot rod magazine. Yeah. 
uh, very struggling, not, you don't have any money. You're up in the stands, you're selling the, the magazines yourself in the stands, right, with a coin changer on your oh, yeah. <laughs> waist. Well, I'd shoot pictures down at the races, and then I'd go up and sell the magazines in the stands. And I, I did have a lot of friends. Though. We had, I had friends from all over that would go out and sell magazines for us, uh, write stories, and uh, it, it was just, there were a lot of hot rod guys that just pitched in and helped. What was it that drove you? Because you were driven. I mean, you overcome all the obstacles and all, all the objections and the... Well, I, it's hard to explain, but once you get in this car thing, I can still look at a 32 Ford and say, wow, you know, and, and I can still look at a Ferrari and I can still look at uh, a Delahaye. If I see a beautiful yeah. car, it, it, it just uh, still hits me somehow. I can't explain it. Don't go away, folks. We'll take a look around the Peterson Automotive Museum when we return. Welcome back to Car Crazy. This is the Peterson Automotive Museum. On display are nearly 300 collectible cars, trucks, and motorcycles dating from the early 1900s to today. On the first floor are the permanent dioramas depicting the history of Los Angeles and the automobile. The second floor houses the Peter Mullen Gallery, which showcases the revolving feature exhibits, which has included French cars, Duesenbergs, and lowriders, to name a few. Also on this floor is the Bruce Meyer Gallery, dedicated to the preservation of historically significant hot rides. Not to be forgotten is Otis Chandler's Motorcycle Gallery and the permanent Cars and Stars exhibit. The museum's collection is an accomplishment second to none, highlighting the history of one of man's greatest inventions, and my favorite, the automobile. It must be so satisfying to have created a mecca for the collector car hobby. I mean, literally people come from all over the world to L.A. and to visit the Peterson Automotive Museum. Uh, how did the idea start for the, for the museum? What, what's well, the, I, I started a museum. Uh, well, I, I wound up doing a lot of auto shows. I did Motorama shows. I did shows in, uh, in Detroit. I helped start the New York Auto Show after the war with Herb Schreiner. And... Uh, and the uh, show in Oakland, and all of these shows went on. I just kept saying there should be a permanent, permanent show. show. Yeah. What's your, your, your best memory, driving memory, driving experience of your own? I guess some of the hairiest driving I ever did was uh, driving with Mickey Thompson in the Mexican road race. And uh, he said, you want to be my co-pilot? Uh, my co-pilot can't make it today, and would you like to ride with me? And I said, oh, sure. Sounds like so fun. He sticks me in the car and I said, where's the seat? And he says, uh, well, it's that uh, apple box there. You're supposed to sit on that. <laughs> and he's going through these turns <laughs> at 100 miles an hour and I'm sitting on an apple box. You know? I said, Ricky, I'm a little scared. You know, I don't think this is too, <laughs> too safe. He said, oh, don't worry about it. He said, I've been doing this for years. <laughs> so we did all that. We had a lot of fun down there. With your dad being the mechanic and you working with him in the garage, I, I suppose that was where you first uh, started working on your first car? Well, I, I learned how to weld and do everything. And uh, so I built a, uh, a car of some various parts I bought for very, very low money. I had a uh, 34 Ford uh, engine and I put it in a uh, 27T chassis and uh, it was pretty bad according to today's standards but it was great to me <laughs> and what was the next car after that well of course i drove my dad's car and he had a 36 chevy which we all laughed at because we thought that was an old an old folks car but we'd all get in it and we'd uh, drive it at speed which he didn't know and so in those days they had recap tires yeah. so we were out driving at speed and i go around a turn and all four recaps slid off. All and four? All four just slid right off because the tires were hot and they just <laughs> slid off. And I went back to my dad and I said, boy, I said, you better go to the guy that put these recaps on. I said, he didn't do a good job. They just fell right off. <laughs> my dad says, boy, that's terrible. Yeah, I'll go back and get him. Yeah, we have talked so many times, interviewed you on the radio a lot of times. Every time I talk to you, I hear more interesting stories. It's just amazing the impact you have had on the automobile. And it transcends beyond the, the hobbyists, I mean, even to the car manufacturers and of impacting styling of the cars that people are driving that weren't, that aren't car enthusiasts. After we started Motor Trend, I went to Japan in, in 19, uh, 1950. And uh, 
I visited all the car companies, and they were so crude and terrible. It was just, you know, you, you kind of laughed at it. Yeah, they were. Yeah. And so they were very smart, and they asked me, they said, do you have anyone that could redesign our cars and show us what to do and all that? So a lot of my designers and, and writers for the magazines went back and had seminars with the Japanese, and they listened. Oh, my God. And that's where a lot of the style and so on, they came from the magazines, from the fellows that were designing and so on. They went back and, and worked with the Japanese. Of course, the, the largest automotive trade show in the United States and the car show of the world for car, serious car crazy, car nut type people is, is the SEMA show. But the very genesis of it comes from Bob Peterson. <laughs> well, that was started out again, Hot Rod Magazine. And uh, we talked to some of the people in the industry and everyone said what we need is some kind of a group to watch out for all this legislation that will put us out of business. And at that time there was all kinds of crazy things floating around. So we decided to put on a show and we did that at the Darja Stadium. And we brought in the various manufacturers, showed their product and, and uh, we were going to take the money to help do this. Well. Uh, as it turned out, the people weren't that excited about the first one, but it worked pretty good. And uh, so we had a lot of fun with it. We, uh, we were going to have a big party and everybody was going to come there and have a big steak dinner and, and nobody came. So Ray Brock went over and said, hey, if nobody came, give me the money back. And the man said, no, we ordered the steaks already. So Brock said, well, give me the steaks. And so we all ate steaks for, for weeks <laughs> for after <weeks>. that. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, it did boom, and we moved it out to uh, out to Anaheim, and uh, gradually we had to take it to Las Vegas, and then Las Vegas had to add uh, rooms and so on to take care of our show. So it is the second largest show in Las Vegas. Around the world, you hear Southern California, that's where the styling starts. It has always been that way. It is no coincidence, I think, that that has been the case, and this also happens to be the home of Bob Peterson. There is a connection to all that. Bob, on behalf of all of us, all of us people who are indeed car crazy, we thank you. I didn't think I was crazy, but I really do like cars. <laughs> well, that's all for now. This is such a treat for me to share some of the great people of my life with you. Hope you've enjoyed as much as we have, and I hope these stories will make you just a little bit more car crazy. Thanks for watching. Car Crazy has been brought to you by the Meguiar's family of appearance car care products. Meguiar's, the trusted experts in surface care since 1901.